Hello, my name is Eric Davis, Executive Director of TV Santa Barbara, and we have another exciting episode of 805 Inspires. Joining us today is Tamara Vaughn, Education Outreach Coordinator for Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of the Art. We're going to take a look at to some of the art projects and this fascinating um, museum on the campus of Westmont. Please welcome Tamara Vaughn of the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of the Arts. Welcome, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. So tell me about the uh, Ridley Tree, uh, the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of the Arts. Um, and tell our audience, what is it and what's it about? Yes, so we were founded about 34 years ago by the Westmont art professor, Tony Askew. Uh, about 10 years ago, Westmont built the Adams Center for the Visual Arts, which uh, is right in the center of campus and was named after Stephen Denise Adams. And when they moved the art, uh, the, the art school to that building, the museum moved as well, and we became the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of Art. And it was named in honor of Lady Leslie Ridley Tree. So the Westmont campus is just stunning. It's a beautiful location. So are your facilities actually on the campus? Yeah, they are right in the middle of campus. Um, just gorgeous. As you look around the scenery, the moment you step outside, um, we just have some of the most incredible views, I would say. And your role there is Education Outreach Coordinator. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I do. Uh, we're a small museum, which means we all have our hands in a lot of different places. Um, but my focus is the as uh, outreach and um, community outreach or, uh, coordinator. I do a lot of different stuff, but I am mainly focused on enriching the lives of our students in our community. So with that, I help put on the exhibitions, but I also am uh, putting on programs. So when we bring speakers uh, to the museum or when we uh, do art workshops, that's kind of when I get uh, to have, have the most fun, I would say, as I am leading tours and showing people um, and teaching people about the art that we have. So what can be found in the uh, Museum of the Arts? We, we, we've done a lot of different shows throughout the years, um, but we love to focus at least one exhibition a year on local artists, uh, Santa Barbara, Ventura, San Luis Obispo. Uh, but we also, and we also show student art once a year, as well as national and internationally known artists as well. Now, are these paintings? So what, what kind of art? Uh... Yeah, last year we did a ceramics uh, art exhibition for, uh, by Don Wright. And we also have done, let's see, some of my favorites. A, a Rembrandt show uh, that was a few years ago. That was Prince. So it was Rembrandt's Prince. And that has been a really popular exhibition. It's traveled all around the country. Um, and actually, most recently, it was in Solving at the Elverhoy. So that was Prince. We've also done paintings. So uh, right after the museum moved to the Adams Center, we did a show on Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot. And that was because of Lady Ridley Trees. Uh, collection of Corot's. So we used her collection as well as some other private collections and a few other museums Corot's and, and did an exhibition on those paintings as well. So a little bit of everything. So we're taping this segment in the middle of um, the COVID pandemic. How has this uh, affected you? Well we definitely we had to cancel a lot of things early on. Uh, I think just the week that we went into quarantine we had had a paper making workshop that we had scheduled for the public as well as a dog walk uh, and sculpture tour on campus. And so we had to cancel a lot of things early on, but now we've had so much fun figuring out how to make our museum virtual. So our latest exhibition, every, every year we do a tri-county juried show. So artists from uh, Ventura, Santa Barbara, and San Luis Obispo are able to enter our exhibition 
Uh, and then we have a juror that chooses you know, around 50 every year, uh, pieces of art that go into the exhibition. And so this year we did it all virtually. Uh, we made it free for artists to submit their work. And we had um, a juror, Christopher Miles, who uh, chose 48 works and we made a complete virtual exhibition of it, which has just been so much fun. We've had so many people be able to go see it. And because of that, people from North Carolina or Texas can see it. They don't have to be here in Santa Barbara to see the exhibition. Well, so you've made this successful transition in the middle of a pandemic to go virtual where other museums are struggling. Can you share some of the uh, processes that you went through and, and maybe some su the su success stories? There have been ups and downs, definitely. But we have definitely been in communication with other museums and figured out and, and with our, our members and the people who follow us because we wanted to hear what they wanted. And nobody wanted to give up our Tri-County Jury Show. That's a very popular thing. So we knew that we had to make it work. That is really exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you. Where can people learn more? I mean, where, where can we uh, find out more, be it a Facebook, Twitter, website, or, or some of the programs you've got going? Yeah, absolutely. We have obviously our website, westmont.edu slash museum, uh, that can direct you to everything. And then if you search Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of Art on Facebook, we are there and we are posting daily, um, as well as Westmont Ridley Tree Museum um, on Instagram. And what would be your mission? Um, we, our mission is to educate students and our community about the power um, and value of the visual arts in our world. And how could people out there that are watching this uh, support your, your mission or support you as a nonprofit organization, be it a donation, or what can we offer to, to, to support um, your museum? We just love hearing from people. Uh, so following us, joining our mailing list, anything so that we can reach out to you and then hear from you as well um, of what you want to learn and what you want to see. Yes, and you know, the, what I love about the museums is they really give back to the community. Um, it's just such an critical part of our community as we, we've learned even more now. Um, what are some of the things that uh, you do for the community? We host six exhibitions a year, um, at least, uh, so sometimes even more, as well as a ton of programming, speakers, art workshops. Uh, and one of the things, um, well, so some of my favorite pr programs that I've gotten to do in the last few years that I've been at the museum, we have done arts workshops like gouache painting with the arts group Rose Compass, as well as ceramics uh, workshops. We did a big public one connected with Don Wright that uh, everyone got to paint trivets of clay that were then glazed, as well as every summer we do a ceramics workshop, which we're still trying to do this year. And that is taught by our curator and collections manager, Chris Rapp. He is also the Westmont ceramics professor. So he teaches a big, and that's, you know, three weeks long where people are getting to build and make as many things as they want. And then a lot of, we bring in speakers and educational tools. One of my favorites, we had Neil Graffy come and he talked about the history of Santa Bar uh, of water in Santa Barbara. Uh, and it was, a, we had hundreds of people come and everyone just found it so fascinating. Yes, I, I'm a big fan of Neil and, and, and the history here in Santa Barbara myself. Yes, um, yes. So, Oh, I wish I had known about that. That sounds uh, fascinating. Do you have any of that archived? Uh, can people see um, past uh, exhibits? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, so not only do we have our exhibits, um, but again, Westmont and its campus is so beautiful that we have to take advantage of the gorgeous scenery that we have. And so we have collected and put up sculptures all throughout campus, as well as art um, in a lot of the buildings. That's amazing. Oh, I love Westmont. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what, what is your, your, your favorite sculpture? One of my favorites is uh, Dan Patterson. He's a local artist and uh, sculptor uh, here in Santa Barbara. And he 
created this work. It's this circle. Uh, he, he initially created, it was metal that he made in a circle that he then cut into pieces and put in this form that is extremely kind of unstable and looks a little wonky. Uh, and it's representing, he has threats, which means that he sometimes might make a noise or a movement um, out of his control. And he's representing this feeling of, you know, sometimes in life there are these things that make you feel unbalanced or out of control. And that's what this sculpture is, uh, is rep representing and trying to make people feel as they walk by. And I just love it's in a location that most students, if they're walking from upper campus to lower campus, they're going to pass by it. And it's just, it's in a location that you, it catches your eye and you can't really miss it. I love it. Amazing. Amazing. I love these stories. It's a, uh... Before we, before we get to a segment that we're doing with the uh, 805 Inspires, which is the project, uh, is there anything else that you would like uh, viewers or people out there watching to know about the uh, Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of the Arts? Yeah, we are here. We, are, we might not be physically open right now, but we are doing so much online. And the moment that we do open, we want to welcome people back. Um, but just to be watching as we will be offering different virtual and hopefully soon physical programming and exhibitions that are going to be really fun and really interesting. Wow, this has been a fascinating conversation. I, I've really enjoyed it. So tell us a little bit about something you've got planned. Uh, we're a project that maybe some uh, of our viewers can do at home. This kind of goes with talking about our outdoor sculptures, but you don't need any of the big materials that we need for some of those outdoor sculptures. These are just small paper sculptures where you can add some paper to a piece of guard cardboard and fold it up and create what you want to create with them. Tamara, thank you so much. Everybody yes, out there, go you. visit uh, uh, their website, uh, become a member, mm -hmm. follow them on social media, the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of the Arts. Um, this has been Tamara Vaughn, Education Outreach Coordinator. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it and uh, be well, and I look forward to uh, connecting when we can open up again. So, with all these cool sculptures here, we thought it would be fun to make our own sculptures. But don't worry, you don't need rocks or metal or even a forklift, because we're gonna make paper sculptures. So here are the materials that you will need. You will want a piece of cardboard for your base, or you can use poster board if you don't have cardboard. You will want some either colored paper, like you see here, or you can use white paper and color it yourself. Or you can even use newspaper or magazine uh, and cut that up. You will need a glue stick, like this, as well as some scissors. And if you do want to color your paper, you'll want to grab some markers here. And if you're using uh, cardboard as your base, you can also grab some toothpicks that you can stick into the cardboard. So once we have all of our materials, let's begin. So step one, you'll want to make your base. So what I did, I used the lid of a cardboard box I cut it off and then I glued some green paper onto it to make it a little nicer. And so you can see I folded it over on the back and I just glued it down. So once we have our base, we'll go to step two, which is cutting out some of the paper we have. So you'll wanna cut different size strips and different designs. I have already cut some out myself, so you don't have to watch me do it, but I'll show you some of the different things I did. So I did some just normal long strips like this that you can use for some different stuff. I cut up a strip with some zigzags. I cut up some white strips that then I put some designs on. Uh, you can see this one too. Made some of my own designs. I cut a strip and then folded it like a accordion here, so you can use that. 
and I did some smaller strips like this but then I curled with uh, the scissors here you can see this is something you might be able to, to get your parents to help you with but I just curled it up like this so that you can use it for different stuff I'll do it one more time there we go and I also did some with more of wavy side to them and my other favorite thing this is to make everything a little bit taller on as, 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 with the sculpture I made a little cylinder like this so I took a piece about this big and I rolled it up and glued it down um, just glued the edge there and put it down but to make it stick to the base what I did was just snip a little bit of the bottom all the way around so that then it flattens out and you can glue it down see so let's get started step three is gluing everything onto your base so we'll start with this I am just going to put some glue all along the bottom like this and I'm gonna put it down see all right and then from here I am going to take the piece that I designed myself and I'm gonna stick it in between the two pieces of paper that I have here gonna stick it in there and I am going to put one of these toothpicks I'm gonna put it into the cardboard and cut a little piece here just a little hole so that I can stick it into the toothpick and then I'm gonna glue this end down we go so it's getting started as you can see next I am going to use the accordion piece I'm going to I'll do it right here I'm just gonna put some glue on one side and glue it down and then I'll put some glue on the other side and glue it down so now you have the fun accordion piece. And I'll just do a few more. Maybe do a little loop right there. So I'll put glue down and then put some glue on the other side. Make a little loop. And I'll connect another one inside here. So I'll put some glue and glue it to the inside of the little tower. And I'll bring it down. I think I'll glue it to this blue one here. So just put some glue at the end, glue it to the bottom. So this is a good start. And so you can keep gluing down uh, some of your paper that you have. You can glue as much as you want onto the base until you have your own little sculpture made out of paper like this. And so step four is just to look at your sculpture and enjoy the art that you created. Well, that concludes another great episode of 805 Inspires. Thanks again to Tamara from the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of the Art. We'll be back again next time with another edition of 805 Inspires.